Hey everyone, this is Jeff from Smartphones for Water, or S4W for short. S4W exists to mobilize young researchers, citizen scientists, and mobile technology to improve lives by strengthening our understanding and management of water. S4W is a growing global network of people passionate about stewarding the only water we've got. Together, we're measuring our water resources and sharing these data with scientists, politicians, and anyone else who cares about our future because you can't manage a resource that you don't measure. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about these rain gauges here and what you need to do once you've constructed them. So we have another tutorial that you have probably already watched where you construct the rain gauge. And now I just wanna go over a couple tips of where you might install them and then how you might uh, you know, take the measurements of them after a precipitation or rainfall event. First of all, let's uh, talk about where to install the gauges. So we want to install the gauges ideally about one meter off the ground. So one meter from the concrete down to the ground surface. And we wanna have a clear view of the sky above the gauge. We don't want any branches or any overhangs from our house or anything like that to cover or obstruct our gauge. We wanna make sure that any rainfall that does occur makes its way into our gauge. And speaking of rainfall, let's simulate a bit of rainfall here. And so let's say we've installed our gauge overnight, it rains a bit. In fact, this is quite a significant storm. And that rainfall has gone through our lid here. That's very important for keeping evaporation up to a minimum. We have this lid with some small holes punched or drilled into that lid and that makes a nice tight seal and minimizes any evaporative losses. Okay, now it's very important when you take your measurement with either Open Data Kit or ODK or in Cato to have the gauge set on something that's level. And it, to illustrate this, I want to show you, here's my scale or my uh, ruler that shows the increments in millimeters. And if you have it on a surface that tips it a little bit towards the gauge, you can see how the water level has increased on my gauge here, on my scale. As opposed to if you have it on a surface that causes it to tip backwards, you can see how that would cause an underestimation of the rainfall. And for that reason, it's very, very important that you have it on something extremely level, okay? Like a table or anything like that. All right, now, when you take a picture of your rainfall measurement, make sure that the gauge is set at such a level where the water level is going to be level with your camera on your phone. You don't want it to be too low. You also don't want it to be too high. You want that water level to be parallel with your lens on your camera. After you take a measurement, it's very important that you remove the lid and actually dump the water out. Now, you can dump the water on a plant or something you're trying to grow. That'd be a great use of that rainfall, but we don't wanna measure it twice. So whenever it rains, after we take our measurement, we want to dump our water out so that our gauge is set back to zero. And the last thing I want to mention is, is that the concrete at the bottom can actually soak up some of the precipitation if it's dry the first time it rains. To avoid that, in fact, you can see that this is actually dry down here and this is saturated up here. To avoid that, what you can do is you can actually add some water, maybe you know, 30, 40, 50 millimeters of water, it's not very important, and just let that water soak perhaps overnight when you know it's not going to rain or even throughout a day that you know it's not going to rain. And that will fill up all the pore spaces in the concrete. And in doing so, you'll make sure that the rainfall doesn't get soaked into the concrete and you end up underestimating the rainfall. So those are the things, let's just review quickly. We want our gauge to be one meter off the ground if possible. We want to have a clear view of the sky. We want to make sure that the gauge is on a level surface when we take our picture. And we also wanna make sure that our camera lens is level or in line with the water surface as well. We wanna make sure that we dump the water after we take our measurement. And if we know that there is a dry period prior to a rainfall event, it's a good idea to pre-soak our gauge. 
So that's it. I look forward to seeing your guys' measurements coming across. And thank you so much for joining the S4W family.